Well, hey guys, it's Jessica Likewise, and welcome back to my channel. I'm the CEO of Hope Education Services, and I'm a BCBA, but I took my exam just recently. So trust me, I get what it's like to try and juggle a career, try to juggle a family, and study for this big test. So I'm here to help you study to make sure you know everything you need to know to pass your exam. Today, I'm going to talk about the four functions of behavior and to give some examples of each one of them. So stay tuned. <music> Well, hey guys, and welcome back. Like I said, let's get into the four functions of behavior. But before we do that, let's talk about what the function of a behavior is and why it's so important to us as behavior analysts. The function of the behavior is why a person engages in a behavior. That's it, that's all it means. So the topography of a behavior is what the behavior looks like. As behavior analysts, we don't care so much what the behavior looks like. We care more about why a person's engaging in a behavior because why a person's engaging in a behavior is going to have a lot more to do with how we, how we respond than the topography. Now, obviously the topography is still important because what a behavior looks like is gonna sometimes determine the interventions. But the key thing is the function is the most important thing always in ABA. So there are four functions of behavior. Escape, which is social negative reinforcement, social positive reinforcement, which is access to tangible and access to attention. And then there's automatic reinforcement which is when a behavior itself is automatically reinforcing. And they can be automatic positive and automatic negative as well. So we're not gonna get into the social positive, social negative, automatic positive, automatic negative today. I'll make another video about this. We're just gonna really dive into the four functions and giving examples. So escape, what is escape? This is function number one. Escape means simply you want to get out of a demand. Now when you're looking at a behavior that doesn't, a function of a behavior, oftentimes they're used in behavior plans, right? That's when we're talking about functions of behavior. So sometimes we think about only negative behaviors having a function, and that's not true. All behavior has a function. So an escape function, let's talk about some behaviors that could be an escape function. So let's say in, you know, you ask your teacher nicely, hey, can I have a break? That's an escape behavior. What if you were to throw yourself on the floor and scream and cry because you don't want to clean up your toys? That's an escape behavior. You know, what if you decline your partner at the end of the evening, right? Because you're not in the mood. That's an escape behavior. So anytime we're trying to get out of a, a behavior and the other person is mediating that behavior, it's considered an escape behavior. The other thing is an attention behavior. Well, this is really obvious, right? Attention, what is a tra person trying to get? attention. If you rock up to someone and you smack them across the face for attention, that's an attention-seeking behavior. If you make an inappropriate joke, that's an attention-seeking behavior. If a child raises their hand in a classroom and tried in order to get the teacher's attention, right, that's an attention-seeking behavior. If you walk up to someone and tap them on the shoulder and say, excuse me, that's an attention-seeking behavior. So any sort of behavior that results in attention is an attention-seeking behavior. The other one is access to tangible. That means you want an object. So again, maybe you have a tantrum and cry because your mom won't give you a cookie, right? That's an that's a um, access to tangible behavior. Or maybe you ask nicely for the cookie. That is also an access to tangible behavior. So anytime you're asking another person for an um, for an item, whether it's by acting out or using an appropriate way of requesting, maybe it's with proloquo and pressing the button and saying I want cookie. And maybe you're asking nicely, maybe you're using a PEX card, maybe you're disengaging in a tantrum to try to get someone to give you something that is access to tangible. Now, automatic reinforcement is a little confusing. Some people actually say there's five functions of behavior. Um, they say there's automatic positive and automatic negative. You, so you may hear that as well. The reason why in ABA, we don't necessarily know if something's aut um, automatic positive or negative, meaning something's being given or something's being taken away, it's because it's a private event. So behavior that's automatically reinforcing, meaning there's no other person involved, the behavior itself results in the desired outcome, that's automatic reinforcement. Sometimes it's obvious. So if I were to go turn off the lights, that's automatic negative reinforcement, right? I'm trying to get out of the lights. If I were to turn music on, it's automatic positive reinforcement, right? My behavior has nothing to do with anyone else, but me turning on the music results in me getting music. That would be automatic reinforcement. Um, other examples of automatic reinforcement are sensory behaviors. Sometimes we don't know why a child's doing this. So if a child bangs their head onto the floor and there's no demands present, they're not trying to get anything, they're not trying to get attention, we can assume it's an automatic behavior. Well, we don't know whether they like that sensation, which is not likely, 
or perhaps they have a headache and they're trying to make their head feel better by banging it. We don't know. So that's where it becomes a gray area. And some people just say, well, there's only really automatic reinforcement. But technically know that there are two types of automatic reinforcement, automatic positive and automatic negative reinforcement. Just like there's social positive reinforcement, right? And the function of attention and access to tangible, they both fall under social positive reinforcement and their social negative reinforcement, which is where escape falls under. So again, four, type, four functions of behavior. There's automatic reinforcement, the automatic right function. There is, and that could also be automatically punishing too, but there's automatic, and then there's escape, access to tangible, and access to attention. Those are the four functions of behavior. And the classes of behavior functions is going to be auto automatic positive, automatic negative, and social positive, and social negative. So I know we covered a lot in this video. I hope it was helpful. If you did find this video helpful, head over to tasklist5.com. I partner with Dr. Catherine May, and we put out a course that will help you understand the entire task list five. So if you want to see what we put together, go there, check it out. There's actually a special offer right now on that course because it is currently in pre-sale. You're watching this video when it premieres. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have a question, reach out to me on my website, hopeeducationservices.com, and I'd love to get your question answered. Happy studying, and I'll see you on the next video.